Evangelist Jordan Coletta with JBB Ministries and the Jordan B Band. We are so blessed that you have chosen to join us tonight. We have really a, a fun show tonight, a great show tonight, and one that I think it will be a great show to reflect as the show's going on on just how much God loves us. You know, sometimes we get so busy we kind of forget that. But think about it. We have a God that loves us immeasurably. It's so big you can't even get a, can't even get a number on it. It's, it's that wide. It's that deep. Has no limits. None. There is no limit. The Lord would not, there's no, nothing that would keep the Lord from expressing and giving his love to us. There's none. There's no boundaries. There's no conditions. He loves us beyond anything. And with that, let us jump into some music. We're going to circle back to that theme. With that, we're going to have Drew uh, Baxter singing Blessings in Our Hands. Take it away, Drew. Come on, wherever you are, come on and clap your hands and bless the Lord with us. For the word of the Lord declares that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and addeth no sorrow. And we also know that we celebrate the greatest king of all time because this is a year that we're running with blessings in our hands. Hallelujah. This is the year to run with blessings in our hands. This is the year to run with blessings in our hands. This is the year to run with blessings in our hands. This is the year to run with blessings in our hands. Everybody say yeah. This is the year to run with blessings in our hands. This is the year to run with blessings And we give you all the glory. This is the year to run with blessings in our hands. And we magnify your name.
Welcome back. We now get a great opportunity uh, to sit down and talk to Max McLean. Just so much going on in his life, and just can't wait to get into the interview. So with that, Max, thanks for being here today. Well, thank you very much. Oh, our pleasure. We're so glad to have you as part of the program. You, uh, you've got so many interesting things that, that you know, you've done, and I hope we can get into your uh, portrayal of C.S. Lewis. Uh, just such a fascinating individual, and uh, love for you to kind of give us some insight about that role and, you know, the, the person himself and all that. So wherever you'd like to start would be great with us. Well, sure. Uh, the, the film is a... Uh, we were talking about uh, the film we just did, C.S. Lewis, The Most Reluctant Convert, uh, and uh, it's an origin story about perhaps the most influential Christian writer of the past 100 years, uh, the film is, is told by an older C.S. Lewis coming alive in his memories to tell of his conversion from hard-boiled, atheist, vigorous debunker of Christianity to becoming a full-orbed, uh, repentant Christian. Which, you really think about that, that's pretty phenomenal. I mean, given uh, kind of the position that he took initially, which was... Absolutely nothing to do with God. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah he, he fought it. He, uh, he thought uh, he, he wanted to debunk it. He thought uh, Christianity was a myth like other myths. Uh, and a lot of things contributed to that. Uh, you know, he, he, he had a pretty hard life. Uh, he lost his mother to cancer somewhere around eight years old. Mm. And she was the, the rock of his life. Uh, he had a, 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 an estranged relationship with his father that he never... Uh, was ever uh, rectified. Uh, he experienced the senseless brutality of World War I in the trenches, uh, and he saw just horrible things. He, he said uh, it was where he called, he said it was where youth and laughter, uh, the hell where youth and laughter go, where he saw horribly smashed men still moving about like crushed beetles. Mm. Uh, and he came to the conclusion uh, at a pretty early age that either there's no God behind the universe, a God indifferent to good and evil, or worse, an evil God. And that was his starting point on his road to Christianity. That's absolutely amazing when you really think about it. Now, from his influence, the things that influenced him, can you talk a little bit about that in terms of, you know, how do you go from that position, you know, of, of the view on faith to where he ended up? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot of things to say about that. Uh, it, it was largely uh, through relationships with his friends, uh, J.R. Tolkien, Owen Barfield, Hugo Dyson, uh, who really challenged him. Mm. You know, I mean, they were they were friends, but they were they challenged each other. Uh, uh, they weren't sentimental about it, and. Uh, 
he 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 mentions in one of his biographies that his argument against God was that the universe was so cruel and unjust, and he came to that position because of his own experiences. But then he he was asked, where did he get this notion of cruel and unjust? I mean, you call a line crooked because you have some idea of a straight line. Mm. So what was he comparing the universe with when he called it cruel and unjust? If the universe has no meaning, one would never know it has no meaning. So he, he recognized that his position of atheism, that uh, we are meaning-seeking creatures in a world without meaning was untenable. So that was the starting point. And uh, and then from there, uh, you would have to say the hound of heaven really came after him. <laughs> hey, that's well said. I mean, that is really a great shift because, you know, it, 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 to me, it almost feels like when you start with the position that he started with, it's like he had no you know, preconceived notions to prove something out. Actually, it was probably the exact opposite. He was holding firm in his beliefs, and then over time, things revealed them. Probably the Lord revealed himself to him over time also in all those interactions. But it's just such a wonderful, wonderful story. Right. And, and you know, most of us are, we're so influenced by uh, the books we read, the people mm. we meet, the thoughts we think, uh, and those are those are influenced by certain situations, you know, uh, uh, people praying for us, uh, the uh, just the chance encounters that God sets up. Uh, but in, in Lewis' case, he thought things so deep, deeply. Like, you know, give an example. You know, he 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 thought the problem of pain, the problem of suffering, was Christianity's Achille, Achilles' heel. Mm. Uh, and and it came to realize that uh, Christianity doesn't solve the problem of pain. It actually creates the problem of pain because the idea of pain in a world like ours would be no problem unless there was some expectation that ultimate reality behind the universe is righteous and good. So he began to search out this ultimate reality, this righteous and good reality. And he actually found it in reading the Bible. Wow. The truth comes out. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I, I also wanted to ask you, I mean, obviously, this is, this is a, an awesome topic for our times. Because it seems like today, you know, when, when individuals who aren't close to their faith or they're looking just to grow their faith, you know, they... They could be influenced from a lot of different perspectives or different vehicles, avenues, etc. Uh, the fact that he came from where he did from a belief standpoint, it would seem to me that that holds a lot of street credit for people trying to latch on to a perspective. What do you think about that? I think that's right. I do. You know, we live in a very skeptical age. Mm. Uh, you know, this is called a postmodern age, which means that there's no grand narrative. There's only small narratives that people use to gain influence, to gain power, you know, to to motivate people to their own position so that you can somehow control them. So when, you know, when people talk about controlling the narrative, it's a way in which to try to influence people to your position. And so what that does is it leaves people in a very skeptical place. And, uh, and what Lewis did, Lewis tried to move things beyond that to an objective place, to try to find where is there common ground that we can say, this is right, this is wrong, this is true, this is not true, and then build from there. And, and that's what gives him so much credibility, because in, in his books, what makes his book so satisfying is that he is answering he is responding to the questions. He's giving answers to the, to the questions people are asking, mm. not going to separate questions. He's listening and, and responding to that question. And, and, I, I, and most of them have to do with the problem of evil, problem of suffering. Uh, and he always says it's about alternatives. You know, there's no demonstrative proof for anything. You know, there's no demonstrative proof for the existence of matter or the honesty of, of your oldest and dearest friends. You just have faith 
that one is more probable than the alternative, and that's what faith is, generosity, which trusts what is already known on reasonable ground. And so when you, when you put things in an either-or perspective and have people make a choice, it becomes much more clarifying, and that's what Lewis did. Yeah, wow. Well said, very well said. How did you feel personally when you got involved in this project? What, what, were, what were the thoughts that you had when you first found out of, of your role in this? Well, uh, you know, we, I was part of the production team, so, you know, I wrote the original script that was, uh, was uh, uh, made into a movie, so the, the, there was a, the screenplay was based on, on my original stage play. Uh, and, uh, and so I, I was kind of involved in every step of the way. Uh, I, I thought the film, uh, you know, one of the great things about film compared to theater is it opens things up, you know, in, in, on stage, and we're on stage all the time. Uh, we're a theatrical company before we're a film company, now we're both. Uh, with stage, you have one actor on one set in this particular case. And, and film opened it up to you have 18 different locations in and around Oxford. You have 15 actors, uh, three different actors playing Lewis. One is a young man, one is a, as a boy, and one is an older man looking back. Uh, you have actors playing Tolkien, his mother and father, uh, his great teacher, Kirkpatrick. And so it, it, uh, you had 190 extras, 270 costumes. So you really open it up into something pretty significant. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's really exciting. Well, that's, that's a great perspective because you didn't just walk in cold. You had, of course, a great experience, uh, uh, you know, from the theater side, but then coming into the film side, and now all of a sudden, to your point, you have all kinds of new variables that you can use as tools to best tell and play out this fascinating man's life. Oh, yeah, it really opens it up. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's so expansive. Film is so expansive. And it's, it's also much more subtle than mm. theater. Uh, theater, I mean, it's, uh, I love theater. It has tremendous impact. Uh, but the subtlety of film uh, really allows you to tell a story in a much different way. Yeah. Well, I know we have just a great opportunity here with our audience just to kind of get to know you a little more and all. Obviously, you're very accomplished. What, what do you say to people to encourage them? I mean, obviously, getting into film, getting into theater, I mean, it can be very, it can be very rugged. So uh, any perspective or guidance to kind of the budding person in the midst of either getting into it or into it and questioning, hey, you know, is this where I should be? What, what would you say to them if they were sitting in front of you today? Yeah, well, obviously, there's, you'd have to know them a little bit and what perspective they come from. But, uh, you know, ultimately, it's does God open doors, you know, and, and, that, and that usually comes from are you being encouraged? Are you being affirmed in, in, in your small circle, whereas uh, the Lord's opening up larger circles of influence? You know, it all begins small and it grows, and it takes time, and it takes patience, and it takes hard work. You know, one of the things I find, like I, I live in New York and lots of, there's a lot of actors that are tremendously gifted, uh, but the, there's two kinds of talents that you need. You need the art talent, the, the craft talent, and you have to work at that very, very hard. But you also need the, the, the stick to itiveness talent, mm. the ability to, 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 uh, to take rejection, the ability to, to, to go to, 100 auditions, knowing that it's a numbers game. If you go to 100, you get 10 callbacks, you get one job. That takes a lot of, of, uh, of energy and uh, ambition and real belief in yourself. Uh, and it becomes a calling. So uh, what tends to happen is people uh, that don't have that tend to fall by the wayside, you know, and and, and there's nothing wrong with that because it's not for everybody. It's a tough, tough life. Lots of uh, unemployment. Uh, you know, people think you make a lot of money. You actually don't. Very few people make money. I, I'm, I'm a member of the Actors Union. There's like 150,000 members. Less than 1% make a living that is, you know, that you can really have. Mm. Uh, that tells you what the numbers are like. So it's a, it's a tough business. But those who have 
the gift, the stick to they make it. Well said. Great input. I was thinking as you were describing that, you know, being supported in that role of, of you know, being an actor and so on, uh, kind of parallels faith. Because in faith, if you're not careful, if you don't surround yourself with, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but just for a moment as before we wrap up, you know, with faith, if you don't stay around like-minded people and be supported and, and encouraged and all, you could find yourself taking a severe turn. And similarly, Absolutely. I think what you're saying is the same exact thing holds true here. So I just want to tell you, it is such a delight to spend a few minutes with you, get the audience to know you better. Um, and, and also, of course, I love the topic. I love the fact that, uh, you, you know, your personification in this, in this movie really helps others look at faith from another angle. And with that, I want to tell you, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Wow. And with that, we'll be right back. Come on, wherever you are, come on and celebrate the Lord with me. For we have the victory in Jesus, and we come to sing praises to your name. Come on, everybody clap your hands right here. Come on. Hallelujah. For we have the victory in Jesus. For I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And we come to rejoice in you, God. Hallelujah. It's a very simple song. Come on, let's say, I will rise.
Amen, amen, amen. Drew Baxter, that was awesome. And of course, we got a chance to listen to Drew and Brianna Baxter earlier. And Brianna will be back with some more music here in just a bit. And then we'll get some time to sit down and talk with them. So with that said, you know, we start off the program just talking about the Lord's love. And, you know, when I think about, you know, what's important, like we think about this bigger God of ours, just the fact that the Lord loved, loves us unconditionally and loved us first, to be honest with you, I think that says it all. Because from that love, if you think about all the things that we know about our faith, that love is right in the center. Like, first of all, take this. So consider this. So here's Jesus. He comes to, to be a man, walk the earth. He's God, so he knows what's going to happen, right? But he goes to his death, vicious death. And, and keep in mind, all along the way, along to his death, He's seeing like the worst of people. Did you see absolute worst of behaviors? But yet he's going to his death on the cross and loving them anyhow. I think that's amazing, first of all. Second of all, to take our God, put him on a cross, let him be, let him, he himself letting himself be put on a cross in obedience to God is unbelievable to me. And then finally, why did he do that? He did it because if he didn't go to his death, then our sins wouldn't have been absolved and we couldn't have had eternal life. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty strong. And so when you think about that, that here's God who is the top of the food chain for us, loving us without conditions, without limits, and yet at the same time, sometimes we don't really, I think, recognize how powerful that is. I, I, maybe deep down I think we know it, but, but you know, when you think about how, how do we best understand that, how do we deal with that? And I think the key for us first is to understand it from its origin, right? Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we already know that that's an anchor point. But on top of all of that is this whole notion that the Lord wants us to have a fulfilled life doing what he has set up for us so that on the last day, the day when we're all being judged, he can look at us and say, job well done. So the fact that we know that this core of our faith is God's love for us and understanding that, all of a sudden we could really understand that maybe when we have these tough situations in our lives, no matter what they are, we're not alone. We don't have to burden them, take the burden on ourselves. Matter of fact, God will help us. Jesus will help us with those situations if we'll just put them in his hands and do it with confidence. And you might say, Jordan, I don't know how to do that. I've never done that. And I would tell you, if you haven't, or if you don't do it regularly, you're missing out. And I say that with all love. What I really am saying is, I'm encouraging you to please do it more than ever before because our God, our Jesus Christ, the Lord wants that from us. Matter of fact, I really believe that when he sees us doing that, it supports our love for him, that we trust these situations that could be very, very dear to our hearts. Sometimes they're make or break situations for us. They're things that we wouldn't entrust to just anybody. But I think the Lord calls us to say, you need to understand this love that I have for you is so unbelievably strong you can bring anything to me. I think if the Lord was sitting here right now and we were getting that information from him, we'd hear that loud and clear. We'd hear him tell us that, listen, there's nothing you can do to drive me away. I think we would hear, my love for you is immeasurable. It is so strong. It's beyond belief. There's nothing you can come to me with that I'm not going to take care of. 
And I think for us, that really is a victory. Because, you know, this world can get pretty complex and pretty crazy. And sometimes it seems like it can get kind of so out of control that there doesn't seem to be rhyme or reason. I think the great thing is the rhyme or reason really is God's love. It's amazing. And I think the amazing part is we get to have that love and there's really nothing we had to do for it other than be a child of God, to, to, to invite it in, invite his love into us. And so I think that's a great reflection for us tonight, right? To let our day to day be about Jesus Christ, reflecting on his love, praying the Holy Spirit into our hearts, accepting him just without, in our minds, unconditionally. Let him into every part of our lives. Because at the end of the day, that is what the Lord is looking for from us. And you know what? Our lives get better when we invite the Holy Spirit in, when we unconditionally love the Lord back. I think it says a lot. And I think the Lord Jesus Christ loves it, loves it, loves it. Amen? Amen. Well, we're going to get a chance here to hear from uh, another, another song with uh, Brianna Baxter. Um, um, a couple songs, actually, and then we'll get to sit down with her and Drew and get to know them a little better. And with that, Brianna Baxter's going to sing, Help Me to Surrender. You're up, Brianna. We want to surrender our will, our way, our agenda for His. So we bless your great name. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome, Thou art welcome in this place. We need Your touch, breathe fresh upon us.
Amen, amen, amen. An angel's voice. Two angels, actually, her and Drew. Um, and we'll hear another one from Brianna in a minute here. Uh, one of the things we want to do is, is if you're sitting there tonight and you're saying, boy, I'd, I'd love to... I'd love to explore more that love aspect. I'd love to surrender more. I'd love to invoke the Holy Spirit in my heart. If you've never had a relationship and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please, for any of those reasons or many other reasons, give us a call. We'd love to pray with you. You know, the Lord loves us to talk with Him just like this. And the Lord loves us to sing to Him the Lord loves us to even have structured prayer with Him. So all of this is important as we grow our faith walk with Jesus Christ. Amen? So with that, let's jump into one more with Brianna, and then we'll sit down with her and Drew. Uh, Brianna's going to sing, You Reign. Take it away. When the word of the Lord declares that if God be for us, who can be against us? That means that when we reign with Him, that He will reign all over the earth because he's our great God and our great Jehovah, and we will praise him forevermore. Oh, Lord, you reign. You reign over the heavens and the earth. Oh, Lord, you reign. You reign over the heavens and the earth. Everybody say, oh. Oh, Lord, you reign. You reign over the heavens and the earth. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord.
amen, amen. What a, what a fabulous show. And now, we're not done yet. We get an opportunity to sit down with Brianna and Drew Baxter. Uh, you heard their voices and their beautiful songs. And it's great to sit down and get to know them a little bit. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank, Thank you, you so much me. for having yes, us. Sir. Oh, Thank my you. gosh. Thank we are so, so blessed to have you both. Yes, yes sir. Okay, I, I want to get right into some really, so I'm going to do like a rapid fire thing. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Because there's so much to do and so little time. So first of all, you, you uh, both uh, come from like a love of music. Um, you're both, you love being worship pastors. Yes. You were on the road as worship pastors. Now you're in a church, but certainly will go out periodically. But this is like a center part of your life. So for, the, for our audience to kind of get to know, what, what motivates you? What encourages both of you to do what you're doing today? Well, for me, I love being a blessing to the body of Christ, and we love mm. being a blessing to the body of Christ. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a great honor and privilege to be able to serve the kingdom, yes. and we take it not robbery and lightly to be able to do it effectively in the spirit of excellence while we're uplifting the name of Jesus because Jesus is the center of it all. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hey, that's, yes. that's strong. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Very strong. Uh, Talk a little bit about it, and either one of you can jump in on any of these questions. Um, but talk a little bit about your ministry and, and, and how, if, if, if individuals are watching, what does it look like? What does your ministry sound like, look like, feel like? Well, our ministry looks like just, you know, regular every day. We are worship leaders. We call ourselves worship leaders that record music. So we just basically are every day to day. We come together. We pray. We ask God to give us the lyrical content that he wants us to write the song about. Mm. And we go based on that and we just flow the way God sees for us to flow. So that's kind of like how our day to day basis works out. Yeah. And to jump into that, uh, the first song that we actually ministered on tonight was entitled uh, Blessings in Our Hands, mm -hmm. which is actually our single cut title for our church. We released a single for our church yes. on this year where we serve at Refuge Church in the great city and state of Mobile, yeah, Alabama, Alabama. <laughs> where our pastors are, Pastor Eric and Jackie Daner. We yeah. love our church family, and God has been doing some amazing things through this single. God blessed us to be able to write the single at our leadership retreat. Mm -hmm. Our pastor was cast, casting vision and dreaming, and he was saying that 2023 is going to be the year that we will run with blessings in our hands. Yes. Mm -hmm. And God gave us the lyrical content to be able to release it and be able to be a blessing to our local body, to our church, and to the world. Yes. Wow. So that's like another aspect of your ministry. Not only are you actually in church, doing worship, leading worship, helping others sing along and be part of that, but, but now there's a writing aspect as well, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, yes. Yes. I, I think that's wonderful. It's certainly a gift that, you know, when I look at both of you, I, I, first of all, when I'm around both of you, I just get this amazing sense that the Lord Jesus Christ is driving what you're doing. There's an yes. amazing amount of love for the Lord, uh, and, and you're able to live, live that out day yes. to day, which yes, is, sir. you know, I love the way you think about it. You're like... We, we do just our standard thing, but for us watching you, yeah. none of it's standard. It's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I mean, it's a blessing beyond measure, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. So what, yes. a, what a great thing. So um, I know that, uh, that, that you both made a personal choice to do this. Yes, yes. I mean, you, you, didn't, you didn't just do this for a job. You did it because you want to serve God, as you mentioned before. Yes. yes. Uh, for our audience to kind of get to know that, like when you to know how it felt when, when you got encouraged by the Lord to take up this, to take this direction. Any, any insight on how that worked in either of your lives? Uh, for, for me personally, one of the things that uh, God was dealing with me about when I was doing ministry, um, God would give me songs to write. And now, quote unquote, in today's time, we have the title of recording artist. And I have the saying of, I'm just a, a worship leader that records music. God gave me the gift to write songs. Mm. And I'll always encourage other worship leaders to always choose presence over performance. Yes. Because uh, at the end of the day, God is the one that's getting the glory. Yes. It's not about us, it's about him. We decrease so he can increase in us. And we're so grateful that we're able to uh, help upcoming worship leaders to guide them, to steer them in the right path 
way of righteousness to be able to lead effectively, but not only lead from the stage, but also live what they sing about behind closed doors when nobody is watching. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. I guess that's a slippery slope. It could be a slippery slope if you allow mm -hmm. the popular, I mean, let's face it, you're looked up to from people in, yes, I'm sir. sure, yes. in, in, in the congregation, yes, and you're like, no, don't look up to me, yes. look up to the cross. Yes. Matter of fact, don't, don't put me in that equation other than I'm just here to help guide the songs, yes. which I know the Lord's using you for way more than that. But it, I mean, I think what you're saying is there's this whole dimension of how do we mm. maintain mm. Uh, humility, because yes. that's what the Lord's look for. Yes. Yes. Look, he can absolutely. strip any of these gifts away in a second, yes. right? Yes, yes. But, absolutely. But you're taking the opposite approach. You're like, no, I'm going to honor, I'm going to honor these gifts. Yes. yes. And I'm, I'm going to, you said it earlier, I'm going to decrease mm -hmm. so the Lord can increase. Can increase. Yes, sir. yes, absolutely. Because yes, worship is a lifestyle. We live the life that we sing about. So it's not for show, it's not for, like he said, it's not for performance because we truly live out what we sing mm -hmm. and we practice on our daily individual devotions. Mm -hmm. We practice on being in the presence yes. instead of doing performance. Yes. So, oh, very, very good, very yes. good. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. It's also interesting, by the way, that before you all got married, mm -hmm. you were both doing music, yes. mm -hmm. and 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 then got together and just kept going. That yes. the Lord obviously decided he wanted both of you together, clearly. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> absolutely. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, you don't sir. just come up with that combination out of the blue. Yes, right? sir. <laughs> it's, amazing what, it's amazing what God will do when you stay prayerful yes. and, you, and you are specific of what you're asking God. Mm -hmm. uh, before I, I met my beautiful wife, I told God, I said, God, please bless me with a beautiful woman that is upstanding and righteous in you. But not only can we live life together, but we can do ministry together while we love each other and doing life together. Okay. It has been a great honor to be able to serve with my wife because we are a team. Mm -hmm. We are a team couple. We are a power couple. Uh, we have a saying, we have a saying that family members call us back home. They call us the Baxter, Baxter. effect. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we love, we just love serving and having fun in God's presence mm -hmm. because is love is what matters and we want to be a young strong couple that can be an example to other couples in ministry yeah. because not only are we working physically we're working spiritually and a lot of times the enemy tries to play uh, mind games with our thoughts to, to make us believe that we're not good enough but yes. when God places you and he calls you you are good enough and I'm grateful to have a strong woman by my side to be able to do the works of the Lord yes absolutely. Wow. well said well that's encouraging by the way. Yes. It's also a great tie-in back to what that we were talking about earlier about the Lord's love yes. and, and how he loves us so much and we he wants us to bring our needs to him. And I'd imagine, Drew, when before you guys met, that you know, you you, you I, I would imagine that you were you were crying out to God yes. for those things. Yes. And I think a lot of us, whether it's, you know, love or it's a situation that, that we just, it's just a crazy situation, it's got to get fixed or whatever, something we can't fix on our own. What I, what I think is a great insight is how you put it in the hands of the Lord. Obviously, you couldn't do it just by yourself, mm -hmm. but more importantly, you stepped in faith, just like we're talking about tonight with the audience how we need to encourage one another to step out in faith, mm -hmm. put those needs in the hands of the Lord, mm -hmm. then step back and trust that the Lord mm -hmm. has it. And guess what he delivers, Brianna? Yes. yes, like our pastor, he says all the time uh, to me, my wife, relationship is the currency to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Oh. And we believe that relationship is a big part of reaching even the loss yes. because relationship is the currency to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Without great relationship, it's hard for us to be able to even walk out our purpose because relationship is the greatest tool to the currency of the kingdom. I can see it. Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. Well, that's a beautiful, beautiful story and, and, and a, beautiful, um, a beautiful example for all of us to see whether it's love, mm -hmm. a problem, mm -hmm. Uh, someone that you have in your family or a friend that has a need, whatever, that as you lift these up in the hand, these needs in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. uh, he's going to deliver. Yes. And you're going to see fruit 
that is beyond yes. what you could even have imagined. Is yes. that fair to say? Yes, yes sir. absolutely. Yes, sir. You yep. probably see that on the road too with people who get delivered mm -hmm. and they put mm -hmm. their hand, their, oh, their yes. whole heart yes. and lives oh, in the yes. hands of the Lord. Yes. And all of a sudden they're a changed person. You come see yes. them six months later, you wouldn't even recognize them. Yes. yes. The ultimate goal for us is salvation. Yes. Mm. It, it touches me and my beautiful wife's heart to see lost souls come to Christ yes. because salvation is the ultimate goal. Yes, that's the ultimate goal. We love to see people, we have people come to us all the time saying how much our music and our ministry has blessed them and our ministry, you know, we want to live out what God is doing in the, in the right now. So yes. we just, we just like to be an example mm -hmm. to show others that yes, we may be young, but we can still, you can still worship God even in your young age. Yes. If you're older, you can still worship God and have that relationship with God no matter what age you are. Awesome. As yeah. a matter of fact, I'd love to see it more even younger yes. than older. I mean, including older, Don, I mean, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, but this idea of we we got to be careful we don't lose the youth yes because they never get exposed to, to the spirit they never yes. get exposed to any of this and mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's such a foreign mm -hmm. concept to them that mm -hmm. they may never gravitate to it right so yes. i hear what you're saying yes. all right i want to make sure we get to this before we have to end yes. um i know we have individuals tonight listening saying i want to know more about your ministry i want to have i want to get some of your music i'd love to even have you come out and do something with us how do they get in touch with y'all well you can follow us on social media me and my beautiful wife we are on facebook we are on instagram we are on twitter uh under the name of drew baxter and brianna baxter we would love to be a blessing to the body of christ because we know that it's a privilege and an honor Honor to serve because God can use anybody. Yes, and absolutely. You can also get our music on all digital outlets. No matter where you get your music, you can get our music on all digital outlets. Um, the songs that we sung tonight, Blessings in Our Hands, You Reign, um, We Have the Victory, um, and Help Me to Surrender is coming out on our most, my most recent project that's going to be coming out later on in this year. So yeah. you all be looking out for that. Please. Absolutely. Yes, that's great. Yes, sir. So I want to just tell you, I mean, I receive just the, just the love and the blessings of the Holy Spirit that I know is right here. Yes, yes. Sir. And, and I just want to tell you what you're doing, you know, living the life that you're living, bringing the Lord to so many people, uh, making it about the Lord, not getting hung up. So many good, strong messages for us, not getting hung up and thinking yes. it's about us. It is absolutely a true blessing. Yes. And I want to say thank you for being here tonight. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for having us. Yes, thank you. Wow. Well, I hope that tonight that, that, that we've encouraged you and your faith and our faith together that, that maybe it took it up just a little bit. And, and hopefully after the program tonight, it'll take it up even more. And we pray that the Lord Jesus Christ blesses you and keeps you. Amen. Amen and amen.